Hello, everybody. Let me just share my screen. Can you see it? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so yeah, the demo was supposed to be, that was kind of my idea about K3S and using Knative on top of K3S. I will go into more detail on that. But then it ended up being more about my experience so far with Knative and the approach I took about learning about it and what I've set up so far or like how I'm using Knative so far. Um, so uh, this is my name. <laughs> uh, I'm just changed job roles and started at the SRE team at Zivo. Zivo is a cloud computing company um, that's based on Kubernetes, specifically um, using K3S. Uh, I'm also a computer, I'm also doing my computer science degree right now. And that's why well, I'm a bit like limited in time. I didn't have time to prepare uh, the kind of demo that I would have liked to show, I guess. Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Uli Um Yeah, so what am I? What do I want to share with you? I kind of wanted to share my, I guess, my learning experience um, just with Kubernetes and then also Knative. I was working for the past years in the blockchain space doing community management and developer relations. And then um, I got a nice offer at Codefresh several months ago and changed industry and got into this space, which is really exciting. So before like up to like nine, months ago, I didn't know what Kubernetes was, uh, basically. So I'm still like learning about all of this quite a lot and having having still this fresh perspective on different tools, I guess, that is for some projects quite, quite interesting and helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, so about uh, eight months ago, seven months ago, um, I found out about this landscape and I was like, wow, this is quite a lot to learn. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it's, it's quite overwhelming when you get started in a, in a new industry and then it's like, oh, these are all the different projects that exist, um, that you can use and some of them overlap, some of them you might want to use instead of others, uh, which can be quite confusing. Uh, so ultimately, uh, when you get started with a new industry, uh, or like a new topic, I guess you start to learn about different, like you start to do try to find your way through and try to find different uh, blog posts, content tutorials that you can use to learn about it. And you might end up uh, reading some books about it. You might end up having really interesting conversations. The problem is with the current situation around the world, it's quite difficult to meet people in person and have interesting conversations and get to know people from whom you can learn from and uh, understand how they are using a certain technology, right? So it, it uh, provides additional challenges, I would say, learning about a new space. So, but ultimately the problem with all of this is that when somebody new gets started with a, with a topic, with a industry or technology, they don't necessarily have a point of reference at work um, or they, and they don't necessarily know whom to reach out to on, on social media. Before I got started, all of my connections were on the blockchain space. So there was really nobody whom I could refer to. And I'll get to that a bit more in a second um, on how the Knative community helped me. Uh, but yeah, so ultimately, whenever you see usually a presentation online or you or you find documentation or uh, blog posts, tutorials, anything really, it's just a knowledge snapshot of somebody. Like somebody's just sharing a part of their knowledge about a specific tool or topic in one point in time and you don't really get to know what went into that, like what went into those different knowledge buckets that made that person understand the technology um, in a certain way or be able to explain it in a certain way. Um, so that's why I decided, okay, I'm just gonna make everything that I'm learning public on a, on a YouTube channel as well as on public notes. So. Over here is actually my first video on Knative. I'm saying first video because I'm trying to, to get better at using it. <laughs> um, so uh, I probably will have to update my notes as well soon on it um, with me learning more. Um, but yeah, so I thought, hey, let's just make it all public to like, first of all, for projects to know what actually like, what is the first experience using the documentation and getting started? So uh, this video is definitely not perfect, but if you're curious on how I first used Knative, then please do check it out because it might be interesting for you um, to, to improve the resources or um, help me improve my use of Knative as well. Um, so it's also kind of a selfish reason that if you're just getting started and then you decide to work in public, ultimately, you have more people reaching out and, and helping and contribute and so on. Um, 
So there are really lots of benefits besides that other people might find this useful and knowing, okay, what, what do, like, what is the order or like, how do people learn about something new? Um, yeah. So um, I wanted to use it like initially for this demo, I wanted to do K native on K3S. Um, but as mentioned, like, the time was not there for me to do something really interesting. Um, also, ultimately, when you're just getting started with something with a new technology, you don't know what's possible and you don't know what's not possible. So maybe what I was trying to like to, well, what I thought might be interesting in my mind is actually not something that Knative users usually would do, right? Um, so yeah, uh, when I got started with Knative, it was actually for a demo at my previous job. Um, and just a coworker suggested for me to, to use Knative to show some fancy Kubernetes, um, yeah, um, functionality, let's say. So um, that's how I got, that's how I learned first about Knative. And then now it's just me like trying new things ultimately. So um, I thought it might be like cool to use Knative on K3S since K3S is a lot of times used on Raspberry Pi classes. Now my Raspberry Pi class is not working right now, but um, <laughs> me getting started, Sivo Sivo is based on K3S. So you can spin up K3S clusters, but ultimately in the end, there was no difference between using uh, the K3S Sivo clusters versus using any other Kubernetes cluster. So it this demo, it just really doesn't matter whether I would have done it on K3S or another Kubernetes distribution. Uh, K3S was developed by Ranger on, it's based on an other project they started and then um, basically advanced from there it's a fully certified kubernetes distribution and the main advantage is that it's really small in size and that's why it's really used on um like resource constrained environments generally and you can install it also really easily if you want to spin up locally i just haven't done that um well not for this demo um so yeah why did i start using knative well <laughs> it makes you feel a bit like a wizard when you just get started first so it's really like for a user for a, for a person who's just getting for some yeah for somebody who's just getting started with kubernetes it's really interesting to see okay what can you actually do with it and with the documentation there's this first instant the success experience that gets you going and want to explore more about it. So for instance, when I show that to, to people who have never used Kubernetes, right? For them, it's really exciting. It's more exciting than if I show them files and files of YAML file, because that just confuses them a lot of times. And they don't know how those different components interact and they don't know which ones they would use and so on. And then it takes time to explain it. Um, and so generally it's just, it's nice if I can just show some um, magic in a few lines of YAML and with a few, um, yeah, resources as possible. So that's really cool overall. Um, and so as mentioned, I got started because I wanted to have a nice demo for a talk. And <laughs> um, that's how I got first to try it out. And then also like throughout the past months, I have been sometimes engaging on the Slack channel. And I just want to say that the community is really, really amazing. Um, there are several different projects that I've tried out throughout the past months. And it was just really nice to, to feel like you can ask those newbie questions in the Slack channel, which is not a given. So I highly encourage everybody to, to keep fostering that because I think that you have a really nice community already um, where that's, yeah, that's definitely not not a common thing, like especially if you're getting started in the space and then you are just joining different Slack channels and you don't know whom to reach out to, whom to ask questions and so on, or which channel to post them. So the Knative community has been really, really welcoming. And yeah, uh, I was about a few weeks ago in a live stream from Red Hat developers just talking about my Kubernetes experience. And then there was a demo of Knative. Uh, and I mentioned it just kind of blew out of me that uh, it was super easy to get started with Knative. Now for many people, it's not that easy. And I completely understand that. But like once you get the hang of it and you know what to what resources to use and what to look out for, like uh, it, it's actually quite straightforward. Um, now, if you're first looking at it, it's obviously like for many people, um, overwhelming. Now I got a sneak peek in the new documentation, which is a lot, lot less overwhelming, um, which I have to say, which I already gave feedback and my thoughts on, but, um, yeah, overall it's, it's comparable, quite like really easy to get started with the documentation. Um, 
And then there's also, as mentioned, like in demos, when I show Knative, this it it feels like there's less to learn for people, and there is overall less to learn. Like I um, was, yeah, there's a there's a hand raised. Feel free to comment. Feel free to jump in if you have any thoughts, suggestions, or like, yeah. Oh, I was just wondering if you'd used the command line at all, or if you were using entirely YAML. I was using the command line sometimes. <laughs> no, no, not consistently. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, and otherwise I was using I was using mainly YAML. Um, yeah, so uh, I mean overall it's it's really straightforward. There was like some I remember there was like for my first demo I set it up like the the day before and it worked. And then for my second demo I was trying the same process and it didn't work. And I had people like help me out and so on. So, but overall it's it's fairly straightforward. Um, and then like my personal experience so far, so I don't like using different tools and projects for which I don't have really a reason. So I had a really bad experience with just with Kubernetes services, like half a year ago when I first learned about it, I was so confused. Um, so I tried to avoid any service mesh as much as possible. And then using Knative, I had like the, I had the incentive to finally try, start learning about it, start, start using Istio as well. Um, and have a service mesh so that was that was great like kind of incentive and with the documentation it makes it also really easy if you don't have to configure anything yourself <laughs> um if you're keeping it simple um yeah and then it like mentioned it's really it's really great for demos and just to um show people why you like kubernetes as well <laughs> if they if they wonder what why you why you choose to to use it um one of the reasons i guess um and then something that i realized is actually i relied really heavily on the documentation usually i would use um tutorials and different um examples like specific examples um but I actually could find not that many written tutorials maybe it's something in like the places that i looked at so if you if you have any use case or any way that you're using Knative, I just want to say that it would be really, really helpful if it's just like a README or just anywhere and you link that maybe on a on a Knative specific resource, that would be one of my main feedback points that it would be really amazing if more, more people, I guess, document their use case. Because like mentioned as a beginner, you do not know what is possible and what is not possible. So uh, you can try different things and then try to see when you hit a block. Um, but ultimately, uh, yeah, that's just different ways of how people learn, I guess. Um, so that's just one of the few comments I have. And yeah, the documentation is great, I think, um, and really comprehensive and straightforward as well. Um, so yeah. Demo time. Um, what have I actually done with, um, <laughs> with Knative? So in this case, I tried to see like just as a, um, I guess, well, before I used, I used Knative on, let's say normal Kubernetes to see, like clusters and also different like local clusters. So right now I couldn't see a different with using Sivo and K3S at all. Um, it's just, it's the same process. So um, I didn't have time to dig further into that like I mentioned. Um, yeah, so I'm using Istio right now, um, mainly because it's really plug and play with the commands and everything provided by Knative and Istio. And when people ask me, isn't that like, aren't you struggling with it? I'm right now. I'm not because I'm not having that advanced use cases for it. I guess. Um, so yeah. Then I'm using Kinetic Serving. I haven't tried the eventing component yet. So uh, mainly because I also didn't really have, I guess, a use case for it of like me specifically trying it out. But um, I guess it will change. It's like with some of those tools that I'm using, it's in like after some months it's just it clicks and i'm like oh that's why you would use it and then i start using like a specific tool all the time um so i guess something will similar will happen with knative eventing um yeah and then i'm really interested in like how uh or like i thought it was really nice how you can easily do traffic splitting with knative of your of your deployment so when you have a new revision coming out to specify basically the traffic spot that you want to have that was super easy to do and straightforward and also the examples and the documentation were really great for that and then i started just uh playing on with profana prometheus and kiali to just visualize that well the traffic and um get more involved with the monitoring side of things and yeah just remember i'm still learning about all of this this is really like super beginner's perspective right um yeah so but let's go back to the demo because i still want to 
show you a few things. So um, here's basically the traffic splitting um, that I currently have. I don't know if that's like actually how that's perfectly done. Like this is really just me trying it out. So don't judge too much. Um, it's all on my GitHub. So if you have any comments on how I can improve those things, then please do let me know. I'd highly appreciate it. But yeah, I'm currently on my um, on my cluster, which is just has several different um, namespaces for Knative Serving, for Issue, and then within the demo namespace, I currently have um, the first revision of my application deployed. So um, that's currently running. I mean, it's not. It doesn't have any traffic going through it yet. So um, I just, what I would do next is just uh, deploy this, um, the traffic splitting and then send some traffic to it and observe it on uh, Kiali. No, this is really straightforward. I think, I mean, I'm not sure if I should show it. This would just be my little demo. Um, <laughs> I should show it. Uh, okay, Go cool. for it. Okay, um, cool. So yeah, so let me just send some, Oh, this is that. Okay, let's just deploy the traffic splitting YAML. So, so we have both of the revisions. Now here's the, the URL. And now I'm just, I have a little script that just sends like some traffic to it. So we can observe it. Right now the application is running here somewhere. Just refresh. So it should show up in a second. Um, yeah, it's just basically a simple application that just simple React application that just um, scrapes Hacker News and just displays a bunch of different articles um, for you. So right now I should have both of the and so just sending some traffic to it and then we're gonna open up Kiali. Now, I'm not sure if that's still running because I used that earlier. Um, no, with Kiali, it's also just with Istio, it's just really plug and play, which is really amazing. <laughs> and I don't think like many, like when you get started, you really realize it because the, especially the documentation by Istio is sometimes a bit confusing. Um, so I definitely appreciate, for instance, the commands that are provided by Knative in the documentation versus being sent off somewhere else. And like, oh, like in some documentation, you're just sent off somewhere else and be like, okay, figure, follow this guide now over there, right? And that can be really confusing. Now, this is now the graph that shows the traffic, uh, which is obviously really nice to see. So this is supposed to be a 50-50, about 50-50 split of traffic between the first revision and the second revision. And um, yeah, that's just, just something really nice to see that you can easily do that with so little, like so few resources ultimately, um, than what you would usually need for Kubernetes deployment. Um, yeah, this is really like all I wanted to show. I then started to play around with the um, Istio Grafana dashboard to just see like more, more of the things that are happening. Um, but ultimately I really like, yeah, the, the traffic splitting that's going on here in this case. Um, yeah. That's all I really wanted to show. <laughs> so 